Hello, everybody. Um, I thought I'd play you a song before I get introduced, sort of a waiting song. So we wait for some more people to come and join us. I hope you can hear me. Can you, can you tell me if you can hear me? Do you hear me? Hello? <laughs> okay, great. And uh, what, what a nice intro. intro I, I, I will play a drink song. <laughs> it's called Robin's Nest. Ella Fitzgerald wrote that. Okay, wonderful. Yes, I'm not really, I'm not on the stream. I'm, I'm the first time I'm performing here via Skype. So it's a Skyped, a Skyped performance. Wait, two, four. It's here. Hang on. See, I didn't tune. song for uh, instead of an aperitif after dinner uh, after lunch break give me something gentle make it something gentle whatever you could suggest I'll take Robin's nest Make it sweet and tender, so I must surrender. You know, I'd like nothing but the best. I pick Robin's nest. But when I get that feeling going round and round, something brings me down, way down, way down. Give me something sweet and gentle. Make it sentimental. Whatever you could suggest, I'll pick Robin's nest. When I get that feeling going round and round, something brings me down, way down, way down. Give me something sweet and gentle, make it sentimental, whatever you could suggest. Whatever you could suggest, whatever you could suggest, I'll take Robin's nest. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, this uh, Welcome to the 12.30 breakout session of the Open Simulator Community Conference 2013. As a reminder to our in-world and web audiences, you can view the full conference schedule on our website at conference.opensimulator.org, and you can post your questions in local chat, on the Ustream chat, or tweet your comments using the hashtag OSCC13. This hour, we are very happy to introduce Julianne Gabriel, also known as J9 Scarborough, who will be presenting streaming and content creation for the 3D environment. J9 lives in Berlin, Germany. She studied classic singing, music, and theater theater and acting at the University of Arts Berlin, worked in performing arts with Berlin, Berliner Kammeroper and Transform Theater Berlin, and also as a director and teaches singing and energetic vocal work at the Musikschule Paul Hindemith, uh, Nikon Berlin, and international workshops in South Korea, United States, and within Europe. She performs with Roland Satterwhite and Christoph Becker in Berlin, but also outside Germany. As J9 Scarborough, she has been pioneering avatar-based live music and virtual 3D worlds for years on platforms such as MetaPlace, OpenSim, Cloud Party, and best known for Second Life, where she has performed and organized events since May of 2006. Welcome, J9. Now, this is funny. My, 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 my avatar falls asleep during my introduction. <laughs> um, I'm going to start. Good afternoon. Thank you, Jay. Good afternoon, dear Open Grid community. My name is Juliane Gabriel, and I work as a vocal teacher and singer in Berlin, Germany. 
I have been online since 1996, starting with chat rooms in AOL. And uh, although everyone back then thought that chatting with strangers on the internet was the weirdest thing to do, a real waste of time, I have always been fascinated by the idea that the possibility to meet people in the internet real time offers wonderful opportunities for intellectual exchange. I went to philosophy chat rooms and met Mr. Alexander Bazinski from San Jose, California, and we had a two-year exchange that was one of the most inspiring encounters I ever had. For example, we would go into a text document from a philosopher Willem Flusser together, and we used this text like a chat room, reading along the lines, commenting, explaining terms, digressing into other subjects, and finally returning to the text together. The scenery transformed into a dinner with Flusser. Our imagination created a table and chairs, and we would not just leave the text, but we would get up from the chair and excuse ourselves to the other and Mr. Flusser for taking a break. I'm telling that story because it was a very playful way to really read and understand the text and also give credit to digressions and irritations and misunderstandings that a text can create. Back then, we could not do that real time. We sort of sent the letter back and forth. The letter was like a first visual, virtual island that I explored. Then I moved to Pal Talk in 2000, where you could now chat and also perform music real time a virtual campfire. We organized real music meetings, and it brought me to Ozark, Arkansas, on a farm with 120 other music lovers. We spent a weekend of jamming and playing together. In May 2006, I discovered Second Life through other musicians, and my avatar, J9 Scarborough, was born. Since then, I have been performing there and organizing events on a regular basis. I was never really interested in the technical aspects of the medium, so I will not tell you today how to connect your computer with a streaming server, how to set up the sound, etc. Been there, done that, and have forgotten how to do it. But I will try to put together the advantages that we have in virtual places, streaming and content creation in the 3D environment. First of all, I want to thank Joyce Bettencourt, uh, uh, Rhiannon, uh, for asking me to participate in this conference here. I'm not as familiar with Open Grid as with other virtual communities, but I have always been interested in streaming at different 3D environments, like MetaPlace, Virtue, Cloud Party, and of course, Second Life. Joyce came to me after I had lectured for the Virtual World's Best Practices in Education Conference. It was my first lecture on this topic and a challenge for me to essentially think about this medium that I have been using for so long now. And I was very happy with the outcome and the success of this previous lecture. I would like to pass you the link as a reference because I want to continue from there, go on some further exploration in understanding the medium that we all love because of its immense potential. Can you please pass the link into the chat? In my first lecture about streaming in the 3D environment, I tried to understand and communicate what the characteristics are of this medium that is only 10 years old. When you see the development of the record player, the TV or the internet, you can see an average of about 30 years until a medium gets broader recognition. I'm interested to find out how to introduce this medium that I have been investing so much time and energy into and have forgotten so much and have gotten so much back in return to someone who believes that this is a big waste of time. We have to distinguish that we are not moving in a prefab internet online game here. And I'm not saying that to blame the gamers. I'm pointing this out in order to say 
that we are actually not a game platform with bad graphics, even though it is the gamers who basically develop the 3D virtual worlds. Instead, this is a real-time medium with an interactive 3D environment. If you don't like what your avatar is surrounded by, build the surrounding you prefer. You can do real-time visual creation, plus real-time chat and real-time streaming. Chat together, stream music and lectures while people are chatting and commenting in text, all real-time. What is the advantage of such a real-time medium? Why do we need it? Maybe you have experienced the tendency of news channels to quote Twitter comments as a source of their information. Information travel has become rapid and people start to communicate and send out information from their Twitter, Facebook and Google accounts. News broadcasting is behind and sort of old-fashioned when it comes to the front line of what's happening. That is because it has lost its monopoly on being the only serious source of information. News is being debated and we can read information and comments on that information and we discuss it all in blogs and in social networks. This tendency is interesting because we can witness a worldwide democratic process that comes from an understanding that the Internet has created. We are connected and can share information and we are able to debate our opinions and feelings about it. We are enabled to initiate flash mobs, riots, demonstrations, open letters to governments or even distribute information that was supposed to be secret. This is a change of power. The fact that we all can write and share and spread is on one hand encouraging and on the other hand deeply confusing and even scary to some. It is like a shift of gravity, a shift of hierarchy. We get various information spread by various sources and find ourselves in a dilemma to find priorities and our own opinion in this jungle of text that pretends to be important information. Messages are being posted without a further proof of the source. The fact that a piece of information is being widely distributed does not mean it is true. How can we move within this uncertainty? Should we just regress, close the computer and rely on the trustworthy neighbor that you know for 20 years Trust only the clan of your family in its established opinions about the world and what's right or wrong. We are in a new situation here, which means we need new approaches to solve a problem. We need new tools to interact in this worldwide communication and data noise called the Internet. Now, what does a real-time tool provide us with? We are actually not in a virtual world that aims to copy the real world. We do not pretend we are in a real auditorium here, even if it looks like that on first sight. But we are in the most advanced medium with the most advanced 3D user display and the most democratic medium ever. The ancient Greeks, educated in the art of memory, used the imagination of rooms as an interface not only to transform a perception into a thought, but in order to remember thoughts. They went back into imagined rooms to look them up for stored information in order to have access to their mind. In the 3D medium, I remember landscapes and rooms. An avatar who represent, represents me draws me into his, her surrounding. So the screen becomes a virtual room. The picture with my avatar within creates an identification with the pixels that form a room around the avatar. 
3D is not only a thing that I see on the screen, but it is creating something like a 3D mirror in my perception. My imagination goes 3D. This is a creation space, performance space and think tank that works interactively on all sites for all users. The space around our avatar helps us to remember later where we were when we heard or read a certain information. The space concentrates our perception because we lean within mnemonic spaces. We lean within mnemonic spaces and therefore can remember. We create context for information. We link information. Information is no longer anonymous, but connected to mnemonic space. Avatars who are being personalized by its users, so they become individualized and therefore memorable. If we experience a concert or a lecture, the audience is not anonymous anymore, but can be seen, heard, experienced in space. This offers a different possibility for real communication. We are finding ourselves in a little village-like environment, sitting around a fire, staring into the flames and telling stories. This is not about a romantic image, but this image represents the amount of people and input we can deal with. There is a limit to our attention. 3D environments give credit to the limitation of open-minded communication. The limitation of awareness and concentration is created by making an amount of information accessible in one image of a room and also by individualizing and personalizing the user, reader and partner in communication. I see who I am addressing who I perform for, who I listen to. We move within the same space. It's not hierarchic, so we perceive a new training of interaction and communication here. It is not anonymous, as for instance a common chat box or a newspaper. This is why learning and deeper connection can happen here. We are not only performing as the person lecturing or singing, but we also perform as a recipient of a lecture or a concert. This gives us access to side remarks, observations, either profound or banal. We perceive curves of attention. We perceive perception. And communication that is real-time and direct and linked into a context of a mnemonic image will create an openness for cultural exchange and learning from each other. In these times of recession, where countries invest less and less money into cultural development, education and social work, real-time tools give us the very subversive possibility to develop culture, education and social support in a global internet without having to spend money on flights, hotels, catering, etc. As we look at record players, TVs, and the internet, now after the de development, now that they are recognized and established, we never just think of the tool itself, but rather of the things they are connected to. The record player is useless without records. The TV set would be useless without a program being produced, and an internet platform would be boring if people did not provide information and entertainment. So let us look at the content that is being produced for the 3D environment apart from the software to make it work. Content in a real-time medium calls for real-time moderation because that is what the hook is about. If the greatest builds are not being used as a real-time mnemonic space, they may be impressive at a first sight, 
but are mere dead backdrops. It is not enough to just create places and wonder why no one comes to look at them. You need to fill the place with real-time information, real people talking in real time and exchanging information like on a marketplace. The 3D environment is a complex tool and contains a complex content. Performing in the digital world is one of the most successful ways to hook people and connect, connect them in a group. Performing is life moderation, and the way to do that and the insights you gain from it can be used in many ways, also for lectures. What is it that lecturing lecturing and live music performance and social gatherings are so very popular in the virtual world. Because it is real-time broadcasting and it is unhierarchic real-time broadcasting. We are in the same mnemonic room together. A real-time medium needs a real-time timetable. It should become the structured time, the valuable time, first row time. It needs appointments. It's by the appointments you get people together. The more interesting the event is, the more likely that people will care to come. We need to figure out which content works best here because, as I said earlier, it's a very young medium. But from experience, the function of the real-time medium is that it provides me with real-time information like a lecture or cultural activity. And it provides me with the company of other people. The other people make the real-time content even more real with their presence. Also, it provides me with a more specific memory due to the fact that the rooms serve as mnemonic devices. We need to keep in mind that with the help of machines like electronic calculators, apps on the mobile phone, information we look up in the computer, and navigators wherever we go, we are not triggering our memory very often to store information. Therefore, I believe the need for mnemonic tools will increase. Now, internet businesses and mail order services are booming, and we are only at the beginning of people discovering the internet for themselves. Easy access at every hour of the day becomes part of our lifestyle. What seems like an advantage now will at some point create a need. We need and want personal service. Our lifestyle goes radically downhill without real-time communication. We feel socially integrated when we communicate in real-time. Many people nowadays are without a job because computerization has taken it. I am actually quite thrilled by the idea that there is a lot of employment potential for people in real-time service stations for companies, real-time social support, real-time hotlines, real-time moderated kindergartens and homework help. There is indeed a huge potential in understanding the real-time factor in the 3D environment. A concert that provides us with sounding time, a music space that changes our perception because of the aliveness of the music itself and the joy of sharing it with friends, can create a real-time situation which connects us in a common mnemonic space. This is only one of the options 
how to use this real-time environment. I want to thank Gentle Heron for lecturing my text and thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. And, and may I say you have an absolutely beautiful voice. <laughs> <laughs> does, does anyone have any questions they'd like to put in text? Nope. Okay, and, and uh, G9, did you have anything else you wanted to, uh, to say to the crowd, or did you want to um, send us out with a song, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> I hope they didn't fall all asleep. And no. I hope they're all still listening. <laughs> Not at all. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, I, I, I was a bit in a time, um, time push to, to put it together for today. Um, but it's, it's really exciting for me. I want to thank you for, for having me because it forces me to write and think. And... Um, and I'm actually quite excited by uh, by understanding this this as a real time medium. And if you don't have any question, I can sing you another song, just for the uh, relaxation of the brain. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely! I would speaking for myself. I would love it if you would play another song. Yes. I'm gonna play. Uh, one of my favorite songs that I somehow connect to um, to the internet or to um, to Second Life, where I'm playing most of my concerts, um, it's it's the song of Lily Marlene. What I find so remarkable about that song is I have to drink of it. God, I was nervous for this. <laughs> oh. Lily Marlene is a story that has been written in 1915 already and put in music in 1938, so right before the war. And then it, it became a big trench hit, you know? So you, you, you think of all, all these, uh, you know, enemies sitting in trenches and they actually listen to the same radio stream. And now Lily Marlene comes along and it's such a hit and such an earworm, how we call it here, that um, it gets translate it. D despite it's from the enemy, you know, like the French who are in war with the German translate, uh, translate that song already 1940 and uh, Tommy Connor from England in 1944. So they enter the, war, enter the war and then they have that song about Lily Marlene who sort of gives them an option for after the war. And this is why I like to sing that song in different languages. Vor der Kaserne, vor dem großen Tor, stand eine Laterne und steht sie noch davor. So wollen wir uns wiedersehen, bei der Laterne wollen wir stehen, wie einst Lilly Marley, wie einst. Lily Marlene. Unsere beiden Schatten sahen wie einer aus, dass wir lieb uns hatten, das sah man gleich daraus. Und alle Leute sollen es sehen, wenn wir bei der Laterne stehen, wie eins Lily Marling. Monsieur Henri le Marchand, devant la caserne, quand le jour s'enfuit, la vieille lanterne soudain s'allume lui. Se danse quoi là que le soir en s'attendait, rempli d'espoir, tous deux, Lily Marlène. Lily Marley. 
But if you want to know what that means, Tommy Connor wrote in 1944, underneath the lantern by the butter gate. Darling, I remember the way you used to wait. Was there that you whispered in that you loved me? You'd always be my own Lily Marlin, my own Lily Marlin. Both the shadows meeting, melding into one Our love was not fleeting and plain to everyone That all the people shall behold When we stand by that lantern old As once Lily Marlene As once Lily Marlene Up came an unknown Italian Tutte le serre sotto quel fanal, presso la caserma ti stavo ad aspettar, anche stasera aspetterò e tutto il mondo scorderò con te Lili Marle. Those Italians Aus dem stillen Raume, aus der Erde Grund Hebt mich wie im Traume dein verliebter Mund Wenn sich die späte Nebel dreht Werd ich bei der Laterne stehen Ey weinst, Lili Marlin, wie ein Okay, so I say wow again here. That was <laughs> wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Do you have another one left in you or am I pushing too hard? You're not pushing, but maybe someone has a question. If you have a question, if something came into your mind. <laughs> then you can also ask a question. But uh, I can also sing a song. Um. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Um, I, I only I, I thought this would take longer, so I only took out two songs. Uh, let me just briefly look at my song text here. Um, see. Yes. Um. <laughs> what do you think is the magic thing that draws people in more quickly to virtual worlds by saying taking part in live music I think um, I mean that's the same thing music is is a lifetime you know when you, when you think you, you, you enter a flow and you enter not only a flow you enter a space and you can really let go and, and, you know, like experience something. Um, it's a very, very relaxed way to take in information. I mean, people can listen to music for an hour, but when they listen to a lecture, you know, that triggers different brain cells and um, they, have, they feel much more tired much, much earlier. And in music, you can listen very intensely and it doesn't make you tired because there's something that keeps you flowing. Um, sex and gambling. I think um, it depends on, of course, um, there's a huge n n use of sex in uh, an internet platform. Um, but I think when, actually, personally, when I 
tried to figure out um, sex rooms, adult rooms in, in Second Life, for instance, uh, there was an interesting observation I made. It was actually that I felt people, you know, pretend they want uh, quick sex, but what they actually long for is like they start a conversation that has nothing to do with sex, but it's actually more like... Um, like a space, or you, or you feel the same need for intimacy, and I think what it what is actually more thrilling than you know bringing the puppets on a on a on a pose ball together and watching that is when a, when a talk starts starts behind that, and that talk is real, and it's a real connection. I think the real connection actually beats um, beats the animation that is prefab. So I think the longing for intimacy is, is, is stronger or immediacy, you know, it's, it's more exciting, even more exciting. Um, or I, I, don't think, I don't think you go into a 3D room if you, I mean, if, if, if there are different, different ways of, you know, well, that's just another topic. I will sing a song, one more song and think about um, <laughs> that for a while. I'm going to sing one more song, Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Smelt like lemon drops away above the chimney tops. That's where you find me. Somewhere over the
then a why can I? If happy little bluebirds fly, beyond the rainbow. I'm not going to be able to sing that song again because how can I possibly uh, measure up? <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Does uh, anyone have any questions or comments they'd like to make? I see typing in the audience. <laughs> Just amazing and wow is is pretty much what everyone is uh, is saying here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, G9, for a terrific presentation. I didn't presentation. want to make you speechless, actually. I didn't <laughs> want to make that. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for, uh, for listening. And um, I hope um, you got some insight from, uh, from the text that I wrote. Thank you. And I did share your link um, on a variety of our sites, and we'll make sure that we get that linked as well afterwards. Oh, great. And um, again, thank you very much for that presentation. And um, as a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up in the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. And in this room, the next session will be a live musical performance of The Poet and the Gun with Vanish Avatar. And thank you again so very much to our speaker and to you, the audience. And we'll be back shortly with the next session. <laughs>